Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mohamed Danzo, and this is Far Financial. A little over 72 hours since the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency George Mane Wea, aka the best sports person in Africa, announced that he is going to be giving free tuition to all the undergraduate students of the public universities in Liberia. So many have been wondering why is he doing this right now? Is this the right time to do this? Some agree with him, some do not, but a lot of people think that it is a good idea, but not the right time to do it. So we have people in the studio here with me today to discuss this and many other issues. And here with me in the studio, we do have uh, Farno Bakoya. So Farno Bakoya is uh, one person that ran for a seat of representative in 2011. Uh, he was on the CDC ticket, right, yes, for sir. Bond County. And we have Chester Weir. Although he carries the name of Weir, that does not mean that he is in support of everything that Judge Weir does. He's a resident of Minnesota, a Liberian also. So on the far right, we have Keleti Kroma. Keleti Kroma is one of those young intellectuals that we do have. He did his studies in Ghana and Liberia, and all those were private schools. So we do have the chairman of NPP and also the Secretary General for the Coalition of Democratic Change in Minnesota, Charles Gono Jr. So welcome, gentlemen, and thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Right. So, um, you know, I want to get started with you, Guacquia. You guys may do a little bit of introduction, but you know, I will start with a question, and then it's up to you to introduce yourself if you want to. The idea of free tuition. What do you think about it? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Donso, for this opportunity. Like he said, I'm Falun Bakuya, a uh, one-time legislative candidate for Bone County District 7 on the uh, Congress for Democratic Change ticket. Uh, the issue of free tuition will never be something that people will have descending or, or opinion about. Mm -hmm. uh, but the approach and methodology could be some way reasons for people to be skeptical because okay. basically there's uh there's two way of looking at this thing okay. I, I in this in the, as a student of politics or political science i know that there is a political statement and there's policy statement there's a difference between that and political statements are meant to appeal to the sentiment of your base and policy statements are those ones that are well crafted to meet the expectations of the entire citizenry. Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking at this uh, announcement or pronouncement as a political statement mm -hmm. and not a policy statement. Okay, that's good. Um, Chester, before I ask you another question, do you look at it the same way that Fallon is looking at it? Well, uh, thank you very much, Don Zod. Uh, I'm coming from a little bit of a different point of view of it. Mm -hmm. And my point here is it's a very good thing. We appreciate the fight, and I want to give President George we have a hand clap for that. Okay. But it's not timely. It's not timely. That's what I, that's what I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the program unfolds, we're going to go into that, and I'm going to give you some reasons why I think mm -hmm. it's just not timely. Okay. And Charles, to you, these two gentlemen have spoken. Do you agree with any of them, or do you have a different perspective? I partially agree you know, with them, and mm -hmm. I have some disagreements and reservations. Uh, looking at the needs of our country, we took on a mandate mm -hmm. to alleviate our people out of poverty, and uh, the president made education one of his primary priorities. And, and, the, and living upon that, uh, we started rolling actions in, in the, it may be a political statement, mm -hmm. It may be, you know, you may criticize as policy, wrong policy statement, but uh, the Liberian people are suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, tuition is part of the school fees. Mm -hmm. We are not, he's not canceling all fees. Tuition is a section of your school fees when you look at it. Just by pay, just by canceling tuition, tuition, I mean, the University of Liberia uh, has around 16 to 20 million dollar budget a year. And the collection of tuitions account for around $800,000 US to $1 million. With the government spending a whole lot on other projects, there is no way that you can say that if you, and you know, subsidize $1 million to alleviate you know, some stretch of suffering on the population, 
it will be a wrong uh, statement or a something. And we'll look at the budget, and they're still, the school is still running, but $1 million to be subsidized in terms of just canceling the portion of the fees, which is the tuition section. It's all it is. So, and you know, it's my view, and you know, we can. Yeah, we have more to talk about. You know, um, so Keleti, um, you know, you did attend private schools. Um, you know what it means to pay school fees. What do you think about free tuition? <clears throat> um, thank you, anyway. Thank you for hosting us. Uh, what I want to say here today is that I see it on a different perspective. Okay. You know, and then I'm not against the government. You know, I'm a. a former student general, and uh, the issue of tuition, free tuition, I don't see it timely. I kind of agree with the brothers, you know, for what they said. With the brothers, these two or Charles? No, also. you know, obviously I'm not going to agree with brother Charles. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the thing about it is, just a correction first, I also attend school in the U.S. Okay. So, and I know how it is. Yeah. You know, you, United States being the number one example in everything yeah. we're doing in the world. So I, I don't think it's timely, you know. So if I'm giving more time, I can better explain myself on how it should be handled properly. Yeah, definitely. I will give all of you guys a chance to discuss that. Thank and you. that was going to be my next question. You know, everybody keeps saying they don't really think that it is timely. Maybe the only person who did not say that was Charles. Um, so, Fallon, what do you think, I mean, why, why do you think it is not timely? Though? Well, the reason I think it's not timely is that like I said initially, it could be timely if it is a political statement mm -hmm. with political intent. Mm -hmm. But if it's a policy, then it's not timely for several reasons. Yeah. One of the reasons is that just uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. the government of Ambassador George Weah mm -hmm. uh, published or had this Pro poor agenda, yeah, for, pro agenda for prosperity and development. Mm -hmm. I think all other approaches of this government in succeeding in providing those basic social needs of the Liberian people are embedded in that piece of document, including the aspect of education. So if there is a policy, and that particular piece of document is considered the policy of this government, mm -hmm. and so if this is a policy, if this uh, declaration or pronouncement of free tuition is a policy of this government, then it should be in that document. And so announcing it before the document is published is where I got a little, that's the timeliness, that's one of the timeliness I'm looking at. Secondly, we are in the middle of a budget year. I mean, we're not in the supplemental stage of the budget, and we are not in the creation aspect of the budget. The budget is already in full swing. So where is the source of this quote-unquote money that is going to be going toward tuition? Where are they going to take it from when there are already been appropriations in the budget? And so the issue of timeliness comes in there also. Because if this was going to be around February where you have the supplementary aspect of the budget, then you say, okay, they found somewhere and they place it in it. Or in June or July up to when the budget is passed, yeah. we could say it's in it. But not when the budget is in full swing. So, and, even though you may have good intention, but you must also know that you have to be accountable for everything you do. And so if we cannot know the source of this funding, then we start, we tend to, to worry about it. And then thirdly, uh, because I have to give others a chance to talk, because yeah. there are so many reasons of I mean, it for the time the reasons. And so one of we the reasons is that yeah. the issue of free tuition, I mean, no government or no country as an island, you have to borrow it from other countries around you or that are carrying on similar policy. Before I came here last night, when you told me, when you invited me to, to appear this, mm -hmm. uh, this something, I started to look for countries in West Africa. Luckily for me, I ran to one of the countries that the president went to seek 6,000 teachers from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria policy or educational system has got similar thing like that. But they have something, because every right comes with a responsibility. The right for the government to provide free education for the students or for a citizen comes with the responsibility of how long a, a student is going to be a liability on this opportunity or privilege. So they have the 6334 educational system in Nigeria, where you go for primary education for six years, you go for junior primary for three years, you go for secondary for three years, you go for tertiary education for four years. So it is binding on every student. 
that should go through this process to know about the six three three four. That I mean, if you if your tenure in, in school will succeed this, it means that you're going to you're going to be denied of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. So those are programs that our educational system was been taken into consideration. I agree the person will come and make the pronouncement, but the technocrats are those ministers from a ministry of education to come and provide a full of clarity and approaches in these things. And it got lacking, and where I really got another I mean, setback on it was, after the president pronouncement the next day, the Ministry of Information had a press briefing, and the acting education minister was given the opportunity to speak on the issues. And he did not give us, he only repeated what the president said. That means that there was no clear cut program or plan towards this. Okay. All right, good to hear, and I know for sure, you know, um, Testa already have a lot of things to say, we can tell. So, um, Testa, you know, you've all agreed that this was not timely, and you all have problem with this, though you know that free tuition is something that nobody will reject. It is a good thing. What are some of the issues you have with this? Well, in the first place, uh, thank you very much. Government is continuity. Yeah. In 2001, the education law was enacted. Okay. And uh, making primary education free and compulsory mm. for the people of Liberia. When the CDC government came into power, my expectation was to revisit that, come back on the table and say, where are we with this? Okay. Now, according to UNICEF, 51% of children, the age of 11 to 12, mm -hmm. are not strategically placed into the right classroom. What are they doing about that? Thousands of schools in Liberia doesn't have good infrastructures, no roads, no good running water. Children don't have restroom. If you say free education, what kind of education are you talking about? Tuition free. If a child cannot go to a primary school to get a concrete education, how is he going to go to university? to get tuition free education. So I was expecting or I was thinking that uh, the government was going to come on the table to revisit all of these things and come up with a tangible proposal on how to solve these issues. Make sure we got solid primary education. Look at our neighboring country. 12 graders in Liberia cannot even write a fitting friendly letter. The education system is bad, even the former president said. And we all know everybody sitting on this table have primary education from Liberia. Mm -hmm. And we can attest to that. The education system is broken. We don't have qualified teachers in the classroom. One upon the time, the president jumped out and said he was bringing teachers from Nigeria. How far are we with that? Yeah. Out of a sudden, boom, free tuition. I think we need to settle in and ask ourselves, what do we want? That is, that is a very good so, point. So, I mean, I will stop there and then hear from the brothers, but yeah. I don't know where we're heading right now. Yeah, definitely. So that issue of tuition free is just not timely. Yeah. And I know a lot of people watching right now, especially those that are not Liberians, will be wondering, like, how <laughs> is his last name Weir, and he's opposing the president like this? Well, um, <laughs> Charles, you know, <laughs> to you, though, um, you probably have to answer more questions than anybody else here today, you know? Um, Most definitely. Because... Uh, you are a part of the coalition of uh, for democratic change, so then we expect you to know more about this than every one of uh, every one of us does. But my first question to you, which is coming from something that you said earlier, you said the Liberian people are suffering. I know you want to say something about how important this free tuition is, but I want to ask you about this first. You said Liberian people are suffering, so George Weir is helping them. And somebody said yesterday that he's trying to take people off the street. Yes, let's agree on that. But if people do not have, like Chester said, if people do not have primary education, how are you going to take them off the street and send them to school, that is university, for them to go steady? Okay. Number one. My second one is taking them off the street to school right now. Do you think that is going to um, you know, decrease the sufferings that people are going through? It is not the only source of the Liberian people's problem. Mm -hmm. uh, people being on the street is, uh, you know, just one sector of a hundred things. Why we're lingering in, in poverty? Mm -hmm. It's a collective effort. If we try, if we should, alleviate ourselves of poverty. You know, here in the school systems, here your children go to school. There's certain provisions. There's certain limits on what the teachers can do in school. Mm -hmm. And you, as a parent. 
your responsibility on what it takes. 70% of the education should be from home mm -hmm. and academically, and they'll go into uh, studies and, 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 and homeworks and everything. Mm -hmm. So Liberians as a whole mm -hmm. need to take the, 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 the education of the children more important. It's just not the government. The government cannot run everybody's home. Mm -hmm. If you don't find a value, we have cultural behaviors that are, imp that are impacting us mm -hmm. very, very on a large scale. Mm -hmm. And the decisions we make you know, are people focus their spending on a lot of different things. So it's, it's almost like you know, someone in America here, or you are getting the support for kids, and you take it instead and go buy here with it and say that you know, it's for the provision. Of, it's I mean, bad decision making. Uh, if we had to focus on, if every parent in Liberia to focus and say, a mandatory your child has to be in school, mm -hmm. I mean, the government can take the lead. Mm -hmm. But the parents come in. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to primary education, we should, the, the foundation, you must, the, they must make it mandatory that you know, there are consequences for people who don't enroll their children in school. Other countries have it. Yeah, they must make it mandatory they must that make there it. are consequences. So who those, are those th that those will make are, it mandatory? I mean, the government can take initiative yeah. and on one side. Mm -hmm. But also communities. Communities. Do Community you think they can make it mandatory though? Do they have any upper they hand have to make it mandatory that if you do not send your child to school, this is what you're going to go through? No, they, the they, they cannot be the power. law, they cannot be the judge. The government has it. But it so has then to go the government the does not have to take the initiative, the government just has to do it, right? They, they have to take, no, they can take the initiative. Mm -hmm. They can't pass, I mean, they have to go through community, you know, just like law enforcement here. <laughs> There is now community law enforcement mm -hmm. rather than just stopping people and doing everything. You use the community programs to stop crime, have people report crime when they see it, and to make the police community friendly. Mm -hmm. It's one thing. So even if the government has a policy, mm -hmm. you can't just come and infringe on people and say, hey, you know, if you don't do this, you know, then this is going to be it. Or just, so you have to pass to the community. There are a lot of programs, like, like non-profit programs, educational you know, programs, just like the way they were trying to alleviate uh, the female genital mutilation program. You know, they didn't go and say, we'll put you in prison, but they educated people, and there are a lot of different uh, organizations that are running these non-profit organizations to educate people in rural areas to take, tell them that, hey, this is health or health hazard. It is not beneficial to you. It doesn't have any connotation. So not to so, cut you off my final question before yes. I go to Kelly. Are they doing that now, though, when it comes to education? Are they going through I'm not community members to make sure that they know the importance of education and other things? Yes, uh, there are programs in place. I'm not at the education ministry, mm -hmm. but I'm aware mm -hmm. that they are rolling up, they can roll up all the policies at the same time, mm -hmm. but they have to look at what the previous government left behind. Mm -hmm. This is the government is only eight months or nine months they have into to look power. At, yeah. They have to look at it, review it, and see how they can re engage most of these trials. We have six years. So you just hit Chester's just, point. Chester yes. said that, you know, when they made the primary education free, so his expectation was for them to review that policy and then act on that. Yes. But instead of doing that, they jumped gears and then they went straight to, um, you know, the universities. No, there, there is one policy, okay? There are hundreds of policies mm -hmm. that is in place. Mm -hmm. So that one, you know, everybody cannot run government, mm -hmm. okay? The way in which the government strategizes, the timing of its policy arrangements does not mean that your, your personal view should be the priority or should be number one. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a different personal view. You got one, he got one, he got one, he got one. But it will not be, even myself got one, but it may not be what the government would want to do. Mm -hmm. There are people in charge, there are the experts in charge who are running this thing. This government just has just set in like around eight months. Mm -hmm. They must give the government a chance mm -hmm. to put its foot on the ground mm -hmm. and get things going. But the immediate, one of the immediate things is see is when is it necessary for Liberians to be alleviated of some financial burden. Okay. I mean, we have 12 years. I mean, 12 million dollars that was that was put in the budget mm -hmm. for wire fee tuition payment for six years, two million dollars per year. That two million dollars is stretched out because the first three years there will be a um, lot of classroom tutors, and by the time they engage in the first three years, you know, the ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade that are getting some similar tutorials will be more ready, and the money that they're spending. Mm -hmm on this massive tutorial program and, uh, and put aside from the tuition payment for, I mean, for, I mean, for the WAG fee payment will reduce. And they can divert some of that money into other things 
and oh, that will be able to compensate for other stuff. This is and oh, just one one thing out okay. of a hundred things that is possible in how in terms of how it can pay for anything it wants to do. Okay, my love for this program right now is for the fact that every time somebody <laughs> speaks, you know, you generate more questions, <laughs> and then you know. So <laughs> I know all of you guys have a lot to say. Um, Kelechi, I'm gonna get to you, but I want to bring this to your attention. You know, the president when he went the last time to make this pronouncement at the campus of the University of Liberia, you know, um, he said this, and I'm going to quote him, he said, therefore, I, George Manawea, and in the name of the Liberian people and their government, declare free tuition for all undergraduate students at the University of Liberia, and as well as all other public universities in Liberia. So he said that in the name of the people, yes. he said it in the name of the government, and he said it in his name. Before you speak on other things that you wanted to speak on, do you believe that there was a consultation? Because he did say that he is speaking in the name of everyone. Yes. There so was a consultation. Yeah, yeah I, I want him to answer that too. Okay. So do you think there was a consultation though? I don't think it went across. Yeah. Because I've seen documents, policies, documents from Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. from Ministry of Finance, you know, and the documents I've seen, it doesn't reflect on what the president said. You know, so for me, that's it. Yeah, and you know, uh, the issue of uh, the timeliness. So yeah, let's so come to that. What do you yeah, so have to say before, on that? Before yeah. I continue, let me just historicize a little bit. You see, if you look at country like China, mm -hmm. you know, when uh, Chairman Mao Zedong came into power, mm -hmm. you know, the issue of free education, yeah. looking at the de is laughing, look, huh? looking at the, names, looking at the population yeah. of China, yeah. you know, so it went across. Now, yeah. the first thing was to industrialize, you know, because if you don't industrialize, you're not going to sustain the education. What's the essence of going to school if you cannot get a job? You understand? Mm -hmm. So what they did was they industrialized, they made sure that the old folks pay attention on the future generation, the farm, they could sustain themselves, you know, and they got rid of this international, you know, politics or propaganda. So this channel that we're discussing, kept in that you know situation for like almost 50 years mm -hmm. so after then we saw a magical channel which is almost one of the best today in the world mm -hmm. so that's digress a little bit to cuba mm -hmm. and other countries now coming back to west africa i've never seen a country in west africa that have free education for university students mm -hmm. i've never seen it okay i went to school in ghana yeah. the system is built in a way that if you went to primary or you know secondary or junior high or senior high in, in Ghana, mm -hmm. immediately after WIAC, mm -hmm. the board determine based on your grades the university you go to. You don't choose that I want to attend University of Legon. You don't choose I want to go to Cape Coast or any other place. They decide based on your WIAC result. So we don't have a system like that in Liberia. Now, if you want to introduce a system like that, so we know that we have this on record that our educational system is a mess. Mm -hmm. The former president said it, and I know most people can attest to it, mm -hmm. because I went to school in Liberia too. Mm -hmm. So this is a situation where you find yourself, if you pronounce free education, mm -hmm. or tuition free in you know, Liberia for university students, mm -hmm. you know, what are mechanisms you're going to put in place to make sure that you don't have one overcrowdedness? Because I'm just walking and say, okay, free, so I have the right to attend Universal Library. You can't deny me of that. So, but what, has, what are the qualifications I'm, I'm taking to the university? You know, and what are the track system to say, okay, this person is coming with this thing, what they have to build them up with? So, I challenge you, the Ministry of Education, they don't have that. Now, to talk of the president. Now, the president said he consulted the finance minister, mm -hmm. you know, overnight. Oh, quote unquote. Oh, I call uh, the final minister and said, my man, what we have to do about this thing? And he said, he came over and blah, 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 and stuff. He said, I don't want to go into that literature. So, but what was more astonishing, astonishing was that seeing the university students celebrating in the street and not understanding the implication of the country. You have a country that almost 75% depend on it. What are you going to take the money from to fund the government? You just had another money saga that system building was missing. Mm -hmm. You haven't even addressed that issue. Or is it another trickery or chicanery to bring, just to take you know, the minds of the Liberian people from the money saga? Or is it another trickery that, you know, 
they are not going to maintain or sustain for next government. Because if you want to do something as a government, you don't just think of yourself. Think of the succeeding generation to come. If this policy or if this thing that you're trying to do is going to be sustainable. You understand? Yeah. So with that, now, the educational system, you understand? The high school students, what are they doing? Like the brother just made mention of tutorial sessions. Those things we know, people just see it. But we live there, you know, our brothers are there and our sisters are there, we know what they go through on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So you cannot sit there and tell me that, okay, the tutorial sessions are going on. Every high school, they have to study for WIAC. Every high school. But it depends on the individual and it depends on the policies that you put down to make the person understand that, hey, you, if you don't meet this requirement, you're not going to get to this university or this college. Yeah. With that, you have something in place, at least tangible that nobody will hold the government accountable for not being, you know, placed in that situation. You understand? So I pause there for so, now. So, um, you know, uh, to follow on though, I know, um, you know, Charles has a lot to say about you. I, I'm I gonna give him give the chance. Brief, yeah, let me give him at least 30 seconds or one minute. Yeah. yeah. I know, first, before we, we go to follow on there, you know, or uh, Kaleti, I'm not sure when was the last time you've been my beer, or, but, you know, and if you actually listen to what the government said or in regards to this recent announcement or free education was not announced and they said we talked about free tuition never said free education so i know as we talk you know we we tend to t send message out to people you know in the wrong connotation to say free education we mentioned free tuition and tuition is not all your school fees it's just a section of your school fees. Free tuition is not all your books. It is not everything, just tuition. It's a part of your school fees, not free education. So the first thing. And, and, and I hear he mentioned China and you know, coming to be an industrial country. China and Liberia have completely different dynamics, demographics, and you know, the population, or uh, and you know, culture, and the era. And you know, during which China took itself, and you know, during the Cold War to what it is today, was different from what Liberia is. We in the 21st century. We're talking about the 20th century, during the Cold War, Cold War era. So we cannot compare Liberia to China, 1.3 billion population to 4 million population, and say, you know, yeah, we look at China. China did this and became this, and we look at Cuba, and Cuba did this and became this. I think. And uh, we are really on a different. And he mentioned yeah, about there, yeah, there, so, there is something so coming he, out he of also, that. He though. also mentioned about entrances. Yeah. Like someone yeah. can come to the university and say, "Is my right?" And uh, there is entrance at the university. When yeah, you pass yeah. that entrance, then your tuition is free. Mm -hmm. You don't just walk in and say, "It is my right," that he said. And that's looking at walking and say, "It is my right," because he said tuition free, so I can walk in. It's my right. No, yeah. there is entrance set by the university. If you pass the entrance to enter, then your tuition is free, not your school fees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so I chairman, know, yeah. chairman, I need to continue. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll you just know, I don't, I don't want to keep going around this issue of tuition and you know, free education and stuff. You understand me? I'm a Liberian. So if you say you attend the University of Liberia and then someone tells you you have uh, free tuition, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that we don't buy books in UL, you buy a, whether your government say free or not, you go down, uh, what does how you go up this place, you get your own book, they give you hand out, whether it's free or not, you pay for it. I attended Cottington. Cottington that you say, okay, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, private institution. You understand? Well, all the tuition we pay is that we have library, we have this, at the end result, when instructor brings his hand out, to say, you guys have to pay for it, go up, you come out, you'll pay for it. You understand? So let us just stop playing around this thing and try to be honest about ourselves here. What we're discussing is more about the country. Now, any personal, I don't have any personal issue with the government. You understand? My issue is with the system. You understand me? So the issue of entrance, entering the universal library, when I first got to library, the first entrance I took was AMEU. The second was UL. You understand? So, taking, in fact, in the hall is where they establish, you know, the, the fear, that heebie jeebie, you know, that you just see someone walk up and be like, you, you, you kill wet chicken, red blood. I'm just trying to quote some of the things that I heard in the exam hall. And then I saw people did exam 
as well as math. They didn't do essay, and those boys that didn't came out. How did that happen? You understand? So with all my my thing, I had in myself. I promised myself that I'm not going to attend University of Liberia because I know myself is a mess, even though I passed the interest. So that way I got interested in going to Cottington, Rural Liberia. So this is a situation where we know the problems in the country, but we don't want to be honest with ourselves. Faglai have said, you know, in an article called Men of Our Chest, you have to be honest with yourself before being honest with society. So we cannot play around this thing and think that because it is political, <coughs> so we want to, you know, gain some relevance out there and stuff. I'm not sure to be, you know, another person or another, I'm not even on record of speaking against government, even when I was in like, but all my struggles I did was, was with Linsu and student community, and when it comes to uh, social issue and when it comes to uh, how they call humanitarian stuff, it wasn't to stay on radio and attack, you know, politicians or insult people. That's not my thing. My thing is being honest with the Liberian people. All right, um, let's let's go to Fado. I know he likes to talk about struggles a lot, so you know. <laughs> um, so Fado, this is the thing, though. I don't still know where I'm standing, so you know I'm not for or against, but. Everybody is saying one thing, like, you know, Charles was saying something I wanted to um, intervene when he said that he was saying that Kennedy said, oh, China was this, they did this, and they became this. I'll get to you on that. But, you know, I wanted to ask him, even though I'll ask him that question later, they did something before they became where they are today. As big as so that means you got to do something before you become yeah. someone, right? Mm -hmm. So my question to you now is, if George Weir, that is Mr. President, mm -hmm. does not introduce the system of free tuition. How are we gonna get it? Everybody keeps saying, oh, you know, the timeliness, or uh, this, that, that, that. If somebody doesn't do it, how is it gonna be effective though? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we said the timeliness mm -hmm. and not the offer. Mm -hmm. Our problem is with the timeliness. Yeah. So we believe that the, I mean, the offer of a free tuition mm -hmm. is something good. So when but there are mechanisms, PFR, when did good, you expect him to do and that's it? what we are saying. Yeah. There are mechanisms that are needed to be put into place. Like my brother read this said, mm -hmm. right now the University of Liberia, people are still, the library, mm -hmm. the University of Liberia library, you still find 1969 books. Mm -hmm. And yeah, students who do engineering are, are, are expected to go and do research in that book mm -hmm. to be able to apply it in today's temporary, or contemporary world of engineering. Because the president said the reason for this offer is for Liberia to be able to partake in her own economy, have her engineers or doctors. One of the challenges most of our doctors or nurses have got is the use of the tools or the equipment now. The equipment that have been used now in contemporary countries are not available in Liberia. So our, even our, our nurses and doctors do not even have idea on those tools. And so he graduated or she graduated with a BSc in nursing. And when he gets to the hospital and see this equipment, you don't know where to so start you from. Blame so the I'm, minister of I'm education for that. No, I'm saying those are things that need to be put into place first before you go into providing. It. You provide a free tuition, and when the child gets there, he's not going to get a quality education. It becomes useless. The tuition becomes useless. Now, I was just telling someone, like he said, he, he gave emphasis on the tuition aspect, and that's goofy. And it, it's laughable. It's like a lawmaker in Liberia telling his constituents <laughs> that. Since you elected me as, as representative, mm -hmm. my sixth year tuition, I mean, uh, salary mm -hmm. is for the district. Mm -hmm. This lawmaker makes 15,000 United States dollars monthly, mm -hmm. but in that 15,000 dollars, he only has got 1,500 or its equivalent in Liberian dollars mm -hmm. as a salary. Mm -hmm. And the people, all the ignorant will be happy. All the men love what he are giving us his, the money he's working for. 13,500 years that is going back to that man monthly because, he, get me right, he said, my salary, he didn't say my benefits or my sure. entitlement. So, so giving 1,500 or 13,000, I mean, all of 15,000, when you will not do anything, you will not do what you were elected for, mm -hmm. it's been more all of your people. Yeah, but a quick question to you, though. Mm -hmm. um, listening to the president the last time, mm -hmm. and he said this, he said, the students came in front of my office to complain mm -hmm. that the administrators have increased the tuition in the school. Mm -hmm. I was not happy about that. Mm -hmm. So the students did not go to the president to complain about the books that they have. Be they did because, not go to the because, yeah, but wait. They did not go to the president to complain about the quality of the education that they are having. They did not go to the president to complain 
talking about anything else but the increase in the tuition. So what did you expect the president to do other than responding to what they came and asked? Because yeah. it's like your child comes to you mm -hmm. and say, Papa, I want, I, go, I want to go to school, mm -hmm. but I need book mm -hmm. for my school. Mm -hmm. You as a parent need to know that the child needs more than book for going to school and not just book. And you're not saying, oh, because he only asked me for book, so it's only book I'm responsible to give him. The kids in Africa or in Liberia don't know the difference People between... The level of don't know the difference between tuition... To sorry, kids. sorry for using the word kid. No, but even people not, at the university, yeah. some of them don't even know the difference between some tuition... Some would that be all of them? Some no, of it may not be, it may not be all of them. But get me right. If the government itself can see that tuition is what they ask me for and that's why I should give to them, mm -hmm. then what do you, and, and you know that tuition is not all that they need, mm -hmm. then what yeah, do you, but, then what so, do you so say about that? What do you say about that? You know, before I now, give the chest, I, 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 I know, 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 I saying, okay, this is what the students brought to us. This is what we have on mind. To but it will make more sense for us to do what they are asking for because they are the ones in school and they know exactly, it's like you in America here, mm -hmm. somebody back home asking you to do something and then you're looking at it like, I am in America, I know what's going on here. You're not here and then you keep complaining. I know what's going on. So they are in school, they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they are asking for the president for tuition. They are not asking the president for books. They are not asking the president for quality education. And guess, so how would you blame the president? And you know what you just did just now? Yeah. You became very unfair to the students of Liberia. Okay. Because the student populace of Liberia is not the University of Liberia. I know. So, we and, and according so. to the president's quotation, mm -hmm. he was making reference to University of Liberia students going to him. And let me just tell you something. The university, and, and, when, when the university of Liberia student with, went with to him, I come in. When the university of Liberia, no, then the university of Liberia, he went to but, but all the university of Liberia student, 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 student request did not reflect yeah. the, the students of public universities in Liberia. So if you want to use so that as when a was the last time, so, students from other universities went to the president to ask for books and other things. If you went so, to, if you ask me that, I will tell you just recently when, the, even just yesterday when the president was in Banga, mm -hmm. again. The students of the of the Bon County Technical College mm -hmm. went to the president with a request asking for the completion of the community college that is being built. So, so the issue is good. So, 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 so from that point now, I come in. So from that point now, the argument would be now students are also asking this government for facilities that right. they can use so, for so, I mean so, for, so, for for so, for so, for, so for let, sound let, and, let, and, let, and learning. Let's, let's go to Chester. I feel like this is going to go a little over an hour, and I don't mind. So, but let's hear from Chester first. Chester, come on. No, this is going to interesting. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Do you know what made grass happen to be more industrious today? <laughs> no, tell us. Honeybee is more industrious today because of the evidence mm -hmm. that he heard grass happen more than telling grass happen. <laughs> oh, what am I trying to say? Good yeah. one. This brother is saying that uh, the student went to Joshua to request test book. Mm -hmm. That takes me back to my point. Mm -hmm. As a president, mm -hmm. if the people come to you to talk about test book, you are fully aware of the situation in the country. Okay, the student come to me for test book, mm -hmm. but I need to pay more attention to this. Is it only test book they need? <laughs> That's a question. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? What's going on? If I provide test book, can it solve the situation at the University of Liberia? Mm -hmm. Can it solve the situation in our educational system at large? Mm -hmm. My father is a teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm a son of a teacher. My father taught in Liberia for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. Since I was born, I have been teaching until I took him from Liberia. That old man doesn't have anything that he can point to to tell you, teaching in Liberia, this is what I earn. <laughs> Teachers in Liberia have been paid very low. And that's one of the reasons why we're in the mess we're in today when it comes to our education system. Teachers are sleeping with, students are sleeping with teachers for grade. Why? Because this little girl sells cool water to pay her school fee. She don't want to repeat the class. She don't have material to study to pass. So at the end of the day, what does she do? She gave her body for grade and she moved on to the next level. Mm -hmm. Is that little girl educated enough for the next class? No. What can we do, Mr. President? Let's beef up our education system. I want to ask my brother Charles here, where are we now with the teachers that were coming from Nigeria? The 6,000 teachers, huh? <laughs> where are we with that? Okay. So now, <laughs> can you please throw a little light free tuition. If a child is in Maryland, 
He heard about free tuition. He's done with 12th grade. That child doesn't even have the first transportation to come to Morovia or to even say, I'm going to take University of Liberia entrance to get free tuition. Do you think the president's pronouncement is fair to that child? Do we have university in, like, do we have public university in Bapulu for a child to go to to get free tuition? Do we have it in Bon County? Do we have it in Bikana? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so before, yes. Yeah, you will answer that, but before you answer that, I think I have a question for Chester and uh, Fallon as well. So, this is President, we are here. I know you are a member of CDC, um, so you probably may not say a lot about this, but more people will always say the President is not educated. That's the first thing that we want to say. Or they want to say. The second thing is, they all say he was a high school dropout. He did not attend university in Liberia, unless somebody wants to prove me wrong. So how in this world do you expect the president to know about the books that are in those schools? You have the Ministry of Education. The minister is not doing his work, but you want to blame the president for that. A president who did not attend any public university in Liberia to know that the priority is books <coughs> and other things, but not tuition. How no, do you no, blame so, no, I would say I blame him. Can, can I respond? Yeah, how do you blame him? Because, yeah. a because appointment <laughs> should be based on competence and not political accommodation. Mm -hmm. If the president is appointing people into various areas of uh, 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 trust, mm -hmm. It should be people who are viable and knowledgeable about those areas. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I'm not saying that he does not have those kind of people at times. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the current education minister of the Republic of Liberia, Dr. Ansu Soni, mm -hmm. he's a professor. I mean, the last position he held in government was vast. I mean, in Liberia was the vast person for administration at the University of Liberia. So he's more knowledgeable about the treasury, uh, the difficulties in terms of education um, at a higher level in Liberia than anybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, like you, you, you asking the question, in he his he he statement, he spoke of in my name, the Liberian people, and that of. Now, there are two ways you do that. Either through legislation, by law, through the legislature, or through that country wide dialogue and come up with a clear cut policy. Within the eight or, eight or nine months, I've not heard that this government, through the education ministry, have gone to the 15 counties to hold dialogue so before coming up, formulating this. So, the president's statement, that's why I say it's more political yeah, but, because but, but, it was but, not, but you it just, did not reflect. You just said you blame the president. Yes. And so, then you so, said that when the president is appointing people, the appointment should be based, based on, on competence competency. and not political accommodation. And then, now, you also saying that Ansu Soni is very knowledgeable when it comes to the university. Exactly so. so. Now, having that Ansu Soni man as a minister of education, not based on why reason, based on accommodation, on the table for the president. Because if the president can listen to the students, what do you think about him listening to the minister of education? That means Ansu Soni did so, not put anything on the table in front of the president. And so, so that means that the president, this is what we that do. means so that the president should the not speak. Is going on to him, no, but not the president. No, yeah, that so, means. But, uh, 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 I mean, that's, that's why. why yeah, 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 we'll go to that. Charles and then to you because yeah. I think Chester yeah. asked Charles some questions. Can I think so? Let me, let me just... Yeah, let him address those Chester, quickly. I'm not sure what was the question you asked. Um, the 6,000 teacher was one of them. Oh, yeah, okay, that was one. Okay, yeah. so well, I'll start with Fallon first. <laughs> yeah. You spoke first. Yeah. And uh, he I used he was the proportion <laughs> first <laughs> of, you know, salary of a legislature coming and saying that I make 15,000 and he mm -hmm. gave you guys 1,000. Mm -hmm. $1 million is what we are collecting in tuition. Mm -hmm. 800,000 to $1 million a year. For the University of Liberia? Mm -hmm. Yes, intuition. For the University of Liberia? Yes. <laughs> okay, the budget for the university is between 16 million to 20 million dollars. The government budget is well over 600 million dollars. When is it necessary to take one million dollar off as a, fee, as a waiver for students? When is, I mean, is it something hard to think, to wrap so your head around? One million dollars. Okay. So is there something hard to wrap your head around? That, that is, that's just one thing. Yeah. So okay. then I'll come to, to, to Chester yeah, here. The he 6,000 teachers was yeah. one of them. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to address, you know, because I'm not with the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. to know where they are and mm -hmm. who's assigned to that project. Mm -hmm. And I'm only speaking in general yeah, to the government. Mm -hmm. So I will not know the details, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if what was mentioned, mm -hmm. Or where are the teachers on this topic today? Mm -hmm. I would have, you know, make some calls and, and get and give you some answers. And I'll be more than willing to provide you those answers coming soon. But you did mention about your father teaching for 40 years in Liberia. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, one of the problems is they're not paying them. And if they were paying them, everything would be solved. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't say everything was restored. Okay. Let's, let's remember that the government did not come to declare to say all of Liberia's or university problems will be solved by the tuition. Mm -hmm. The government only made a single move to alleviate a portion of Liberian people's suffering, to say tuition will be off, we'll write it off. They didn't say that we are solving all university problems, to say, oh, it would be unfair to a student who didn't have university in Bapalu to come and say where they would take their, how they would come to Morovia to go to school. How have they been managing before? Oh, wow. <laughs> People have been going to school, right? So, People have been graduating from school. Let's be honest. No, People have been going no, to school. The university have been graduating students. Is this not an additional help? How have people been going to school that today Liberia will just come up and say, hey, and you know, no tuition, no other fees, nothing, everything should just be. If you say that, people are already crying that why you took off one million dollars, let alone come and say every other thing is free. People are jumping on the roof and start climbing over the roof. The same people. They really don't know where they stand <coughs> or what they want. Okay. If yeah. someone can take a portion, you mentioned your father teaching for 40 years. If they were paying them, it would have solved most of the problem. Don't okay? So. We, yeah. are paying, so we are paying, yeah. so, we are paying so, legislature so, yeah. very high amount of money. Okay. We are so, paying legislature. Yeah. Has it solved the issue of corruption in Liberia? With the high amount of money that everybody complained that they pay legislature. So we pay teachers, let's say we pay them 10 times the salary. All right, you know, so, so let's hear yeah, from Kennedy so, quickly, mm -hmm. and then yeah, I want to so, post something before I get to you guys. This thing is getting yeah. interesting, you know. Sure. You know, I overheard something that if you have over 600 millions of budget and you just take one million out of it and pay something and blah, blah, blah. So the thing here is, that's a policeman theory of, you know, of, of well, I mean, expenditure. Like, he feels that when he goes on the traffic, <laughs> He gets this money from a taxi driver, the next day you'll still get some. So go what the essence of me not spending this one today? Has a story so it doesn't work like that. And I also want to make a statement about what you said previously about George Bia not, you know, being attending the, university yeah, in Liberia. Yeah. They pronounce it as a doctor. Mm -hmm. And I won't allow you to say that Honorary to a doctor degree. Yeah. I'm coming. Don't say yeah. <laughs> Honorario, not honorario. He's an alumna of Covington now. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, so that's 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 my serious so company. You know, <laughs> I graduated from Covington. So and you know, it's a private university, okay. not a public one. So, so, so okay. now on the other hand, yeah. you may mention of what I previously said about China, you know, taking mm -hmm. you know yeah. the population out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Looking at a country like China, like how big China is, mm -hmm. the population of China. See, comparing that with that of Liberia, how many years it takes to get Liberia out of illiteracy? <laughs> Cuba, they took less than five years. Today, Cuba have one of the best medical doctors in the world. <laughs> they didn't get out through aid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got it through technical crafts. Merit based. You have smart that. people in the country. You have policies. You have people that write. Mm. I've seen some of those things. Okay. Also, mm -hmm. you understand? Know oh, yeah. yeah. So, those things are well, there. Yeah. But yes, still, people just go and make pronouncements based on our own personal feelings. You don't want government like that. You know what I'm saying? The three branches of government, you consult. You know, those serve as watchdogs on each other. So, a lawmaker sits into the house, and then the president goes and pronounces free tuition. The next one he hears it on the radio. How? Because universal liberal students. So what happens to people that are in Cardinal? You know that almost 75% of the students in Cardinal, they own uh, other scholarship or something. Where those phones come from? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. and he said, yeah, he said people don't complain. Yeah, when I was in Cottington, mm -hmm. anytime I said mm -hmm. visit Cottington, mm -hmm. we have a placard. Mm -hmm. Subsidy increment. Mm -hmm. You understand? The, the, the institution will not have much uh, population. Mm -hmm. So how do you expect the institution to run? Not just because they have other universities in Liberia. <clears throat> now, coming down to the high school system, with the salary thing the brother may mention of, how do you expect someone to sustain a family if they're making one thousand five thirty? You understand? Okay. You call that government institution. Yeah. Now the, the colleges that was that, 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 that was initiated by the former president, Madam Sally, mm -hmm. those there are some of them up to now, they are still not even up to the level. You understand? What are things, what are mechanisms we put into place to make sure that all colleges are completed? And no budgetary allotment that are making for the lawmakers that 
that initiating some other high school or junior high school in their uh, various districts. What are things you're doing to make sure that those things are on record and they are doing the actual things? So, that quick is question, to be maybe a yes or no question. Do you think the president is getting ahead of himself? Way ahead of himself. Okay. Um, and then, you know, uh, I just want to uh, quote something here, which was from the vice president uh, for the University of Liberia um, Relations, uh, Anthony. Uh, Norris. So he said this, um, you know, after the president's pronouncement. He said, so now that the president is paying for tuition for all of the students, this is going to be a direct income coming straight to the university. He is the game changer in terms of financing the university. So, for instance, for 20 students, I mean 20,000 students, if all of them take 15 credits per hour, I am just assuming we will be talking approximately 1.2 million US dollar that the government will be giving us, you know. So, just right there, because he spoke about 1 million dollar mm, or something. Yeah. If they took they, this guy is just talking about, yeah, and that is just a semester. Yes. I, think I, we are I used to do about, that 21. And he is talking about 1.2 million. So, then we are, we know for sure 1 million is that, like, all the facts. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because the 20, the 20 million, the, I mean, the 20,000 was due to the fact that people used to pay money. A so, situation. So, yeah. But now that you are making it free, yeah. you know you expect more 15. than that number. Yeah. So and then you expect more credit from these students. Yeah. Now that they're making it free, mm -hmm. people never used to take some. Some people took four credits. Mm -hmm. Some people took six credits. Mm -hmm. Some people took fifteen credits. Mm -hmm. Some people took, 15 credits. Mm -hmm. some people took ten credits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that it is free, people can be more emboldened mm -hmm. to take more credit because they know it will be. Paid for, right? Are you thinking so the the, of I told you that the government, the, the school was collecting between eight hundred thousand dollars to one million dollars mm -hmm. in tuition, mm -hmm. and most of those something were not sometimes paid. Mm -hmm. Now that it is free, you will find that people will take high amount of credits, and the government will still be able to pay for it. So that's why he said one point two million, right above the one million or below the one million that they were already making. Mm -hmm. And what are the classrooms? So it is not the classroom. Yeah. So <laughs> let, let me address. And, and, yeah. Let, no, this so, so this two gentlemen have something to address. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give you the chance, but um, let's yeah. go to Ophala first. Let, let, yeah. me, tell, can, let can, me tell you something. One of the issues uh, that he uh, yeah, right, 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 that down, yeah, you respond to that. Don't so. Don't so. Don't so. Let me tell you something. Don't so. Let me tell you something. At the University of Liberia, there are some students who had to drop because of financial and economic conditions. Mm -hmm. And like we said, research before making policies is so, important. Mm -hmm. is, the university, is the government of Liberia aware of how many students that are now ready to, get re, to seek readmission because of the free tuition? I think that is not taken into consideration because they are uh, Anthony Tuer, Norris Tuer is speaking of the current enrollment at the University of Liberia. Mm -hmm. But because of the pronouncement, you will get to know that those that are already or, or students of the University of Liberia but had to drop, will start to seek readmission. And you can deny them. They ain't got to go take entrance for that. You will not deny them of that. Sure. I can tell you that there will be an increment more than that. Sure. That's one aspect. But, like I told you here, you cannot use the University of Liberia as a pilot project for the entire public universities in Liberia. I just wrote down seven University, public universities in Liberia, I mean public colleges in Liberia. Mm -hmm. You have the Bombay County Community College, you have the Grand Bassa County Community College, mm -hmm. you have the Bond County Technical College, you have the Nima County Community College, the Tottenham University in Maryland, the Lofa County Community College, mm -hmm. and the University of Liberia. Mm -hmm. And you understand, those are the seven universities. And you use the 20,000 student plea from the University of Liberia to make available one million. He said one million. One million for tuition free for public universities in Liberia. How sincere is that? How realistic is that? This is a recipe of chaos or conflict in our country. I don't know where it is. Because the when, the <laughs> univer when the money is only adjusted, I mean, it's, it's only used in the University of Liberia, Bonn County students will stand up. Nima County students will stand up. And other uh, and community colleges that feel that they do supposed to benefit from this will stand up. And so that's why we say you need to do research. So just to add up on what you say. You understand? They have, so they have hold on, hold on. So what, you want the men to add up? And I've not even addressed it. So I'm just adding on something so quick. I, I, I wanted to, um, you know, have a follow-up question, but I was going to Chester and him, yeah. and then we will go to the two of you. Um, so I'm talking about the sustainability here, mm -hmm. because 
you know, many at times, like I was asking him if the president is getting ahead of himself, we have seen in many cases, I am not really someone who speaks against this government a lot, but we have seen in so many cases where they were always groundbreaking. Like, you know, every time you look, they say, oh, there is a groundbreaking somewhere. Right the president will do this. And then that ground is going to be easy. broken and it will never come back up again. You guys so, you know, uh, we talk about the island. You know. Um, that was going to be a modern city, mm -hmm. and it would be called the new Morovia or something. Um, the we haven't heard much of that. The military hospital, oh, gosh. we haven't heard much of that. The 6,000 students, Charles couldn't give any account on that. His, teachers. The, yeah. Yeah. I mean, our I, I students, uh, our teachers. Yeah. Yeah. The I mean, billion. the current the quarry status, this 16 billion, the FBI way. was supposed to investigate, but then at the end of the day, that just died down. So. Do you really think this is even going to go far, though? Well, thank you very much, Donzo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say to my, I want to say here, Charles is not an official spokesman for the government. Yeah. And we have just given our opinion here yeah. on issues arising from our Muslim land. But uh, the government have the opportunity. The government is just nine months into power, into office, and uh, they can still sit down and see where they want to take this thing. That's why when I spoke here earlier, I said, Josh, we are made a very nice statement, but it wasn't timely. And I don't know whether tuition free came out of the context because the University of Nabiru student went to him, mm -hmm. or he sat down and called his Minister of Education and said, look, Let's look at the education system in the country. Yeah, he said the students went to him. Yeah, so if you're going to act because people will come to him, then I don't know where the country is heading to. <laughs> you keep Military hospital in Liberia. I don't want to divert our discussion here into something different. But look at redemption. Look at JFK. Is it necessary for a military hospital if the ones that we have right now can't even do anything? Just day before yesterday, my older sister in Liberia son got sick. In less than three days, they live or die. Wow. I don't want to know that bread our conversation, but let's stick to the education system there. Mm -hmm. So, to answer your question, the government of Liberia still have enough time. And we are appealing to the honorable president. President, take your time. It's six years into office. If you do good, we're going to give you another six years. Taking care of the people is not Jinjiang. And that's why some of us were saying from the beginning, playing soccer is different from leading the people. Now you are in office. We respect you. We give you all our support. But take your time. Do what is right. Consult people. Don't make decisions because few students from the university run up to you and say, we need textbooks. Yeah. Boom, the next day you go on campus, tuition free. One of the things that pissed me off when the president went to the University of Liberia for classes to be suspended. Why? Why should people not learn because the president is coming to the University of Liberia? What's the, what's the point of that? Anyway, but to answer your question, <laughs> the president got enough time. You know, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, so, right. just I, I, know, I, know, I know Charles really I, I, wants I, I, to address some of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he will. Now we're going to give you a break. You can be sick for sympathy here, now. I'm going to try to respond to most of you. We're having three different opponents, and I have to respond to at least a section of the Do you want to add this to him? I think that's not all right. So anything he wants to do with these two first, then he'll get to you. People yeah, can use so some words. Three different <laughs> opinions, not opponents. I think it's <laughs> 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 opposition. No, it's opponents. Yeah, we are yeah. We are just opinions here. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes. you can you can be up <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So here is it. Or is it, let me let Jimmy, me. Let, I thought I was on the floor, Jeremy. No, no, it's me. All right. So let's give the <laughs> chance to address <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Liberians. Yeah. It is just not you know our conversation. Yeah. Liberians are amazing type of people. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, especially Ellen Joseph Ellen was running and going. You never heard people, and everybody was not making decisions on how government should be run. Mm -hmm. Out of a certain job, as the president, everybody on every talk show you know, knows how to run a government. You're not being fair. You're not being fair to they, us. They, they, they lay out, this is what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do this. And he's not doing this. Then the next person comes their own. You're supposed to start from R to spell Liberia. <laughs> the next person comes, the Republic starts with C. 
You start to do this way. Mm -hmm. So everybody now has government experience on how to run the country. Mm -hmm. Out of a sudden. So one thing, you know, I want to say here is uh, it's quite amazing. When we, even uh, Chester said, one thing pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Why people had to stop learning? Because the president went to the university. When you were in school in Liberia, even when the superintendent came, uh, was that best practice? Uh, so does it make it right? Huh? Was that best practice? When, when elementary schools in America here, mm -hmm. when official come, mm -hmm. they can gather all the children in the gym. Mm -hmm. It don't mean they cancel mm -hmm. the entire school process. When no, our official okay. show up, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you do that. And I went to school it's in Liberia, where Jack. people come, when guests come, they can take all from the classroom. We'll come outside. Which was not good. And we'll be happy because the fact that we're not learning without day. Okay. That's a break for us. Mm -hmm. We all know. So uh, when I say become I, 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 the issue that's this system, we just want to learn. Because the process of the and that's why you want us to continue with? You want us to continue with the back part? Yeah, but can I think before I give that to you? So Chad said two things that were really amazing. You know, yeah, no, we can keep going. Yeah. So one of the things that you said was, you know, you will be happy on that day because you are not learning. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make it right. So that as means a, you are as not. As a kid. Yeah. Well, I was coming up. Oh, yeah. But then you, you here. Know, as a kid, even not a grown up, but as a kid, you knew that you were not learning that day. So yeah. a grown up should definitely know that he's not learning yeah. when he is stopped yeah. mm -hmm. from going, right, you know, uh, into classes, right? Yeah. So do you think it is right, though, that you wouldn't be learning just because you want to go listen to your president, even though you know that this president can go on the national TV yeah. and yeah. make these announcements yeah. and yeah. everybody will be able to hear yeah. it? Do you think, okay, even make it do I think it is right that I would not be learning? Mm -hmm. It is not that I was not learning. No, I, no, I did because not say you were not learning. Do academic, you it will be right? Academic exposure is mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. There are yeah. lots of ways people can learn. Yeah. People, mm -hmm. you have to make People day. gather mm -hmm. outside, there are a lot of exposure to yeah. education. Mm -hmm. So to say that sitting in the class mm -hmm. and because they remove you from the class that you're not learning, mm -hmm. it's not true. If I am doing but mathematics, I'm doing the, chemistry, yeah. going to go listen to the yeah. president, do you really think I will be able to know one yeah. plus one yeah. just from listening no, no, to the president? Would, number one. Number two, just because somebody is doing it, does that mean it is right to do it? Because you said that, oh, you know, when we were small, the superintendent would come, they would stop the classes. Yeah, uh, you know, in the United we'll States, yeah, yeah, something will happen, they will do this. Doing it, does that mean that it is right to do it? Yes, it's right. Wow. Just because somebody is doing it, right? Definitely. Right. No, not just because someone is doing it, yeah. but it is right when people come, you must recognize, you must make, you know, even the next generation mm -hmm. of children, when they see, you know, officials come, I mean, they will follow suit. I mean, it is not a wrong thing. There are and lots this, of ways. And, 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 and this arrival of the president on the campus of the university it, it did not stop was education. It announced beforehand that yeah. people could yes. know that the president was coming on the campus. Yes, and so they, it was announced. Okay, all right, let me go to Kennedy and then we'll get to you later. The student body so, was made aware and the, um, yeah. the administration um, was um, made aware. Okay. So I think we should try to settle down with the brother a little because yeah. I'm seeing on his list my name is number one on his list. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going out with that. I'm not even addressed. Yeah. I'm not even addressed. So, yeah, yeah, he's here. So yeah. it's okay. Let's, let's yeah. try to go down. All right, so, so what I want to say here is yeah. this. I, I'm a job we are friend. You understand me? Mm -hmm. I attended refugee school, and that's why when I was in Ezra, we are name was one of the names that I used to feel proud of whenever mm -hmm. I say I'm from Liberia, you know? Yeah. So growing up with those things, and Samuel Tua the, the, the minister, the minister of I read the minister a lot. Some of his, his writings, you know, his articles and stuff. So, I mean, we have those, those uh, competent people in the government. And another thing I also realize is his kindness, the president. He's so kind to the extent that, you know, the kindness is overshadowing his function. You understand? And my problem, too, with those people that are working around him, probably because of fear losing that job, they don't want to be honest with him. Getting me? So if you have a plan as a president, and then you bring up, you know, such proposal, let the Ministry of Finance be able to back that thing with his knowledge, you know, his technical experience. You getting me? So all the whole vision stuff we had in the past, you know, the the vision 2030, the blah blah blah, all those things are still are still there. You understand? They have time frame of achieving those things. That's the reason we call the government on continuity. So if this government is fading out, the next government that is coming in should know how to work with those things. So if you want to kick everything aside, then you want to harm the government. Because the budget, the budgetary allotment first, it went down. It was around 8 million. Mm -hmm. 
when the god making it rose up to 50 560 something million mm -hmm. so they had those you know documents you know those policies in place within the framework of the budget you understand so if you come in you know as a system or a government try to review those policies or those documents take the best one out of them the ones that are legislated take them and add it on your vision for the country mm -hmm. in consultation with the three arms of government, if possible, the citizenry of the country. You understand? Mm -hmm. But those things, we didn't see any. Now, you are new in a house. Now you want to control the house. And you met people in a house. You understand? You said the government is new, like in less than nine months. So in less than nine months, where are you coming from with all those things about free tuition and stuff. Yeah, but that was part of the policies though. So when George Weah was coming into power, when he no. needed people to vote for no. him, all he said to people was that he's going to gonna get rid of poverty. He's going to make sure that Liberians do not suffer anymore. Very so good. then now this is what he's doing. And that, and those so let me bring something. I'm not, yeah. I'm not yes. in it. Let me bring something. You see, the former president of Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. you know, you have uh, Thomas Sankara. Mm -hmm. This guy going into office with a military regime, this guy make sure he cut down the expense, the expenditure of the government. Government officials they never used to ride first class, other than economic class. And he had a statement that says, if you get in a plane from the economic class and someone that is in a uh, how do you call, uh, uh, the first class, class yeah. you all arrive at the same time. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, apart from that, the vehicles that they use, everything was cheap. You understand? So he said, no one is going to use the government money to enrich themselves. But this guy came into office, quote unquote, proper agenda or proper manifesto. We've seen the, the even his office, the budget for his office have increased from that of Madame Serif that we consider as the bourgeois government that they ate Maybe the Labrimpo. Maybe she was anti-poor, right? That, Not pro -poor. Yeah, yeah, so that ate the Labrimpo money. But this is more managing almost 15 million up to 17 million, and you, your, yours is up to 21 point something million. So, so do you think that the pro poor agenda is not for Liberian people? What I think is, pro -poor agenda these is guys, scary, they are not being realistic to the Liberian because people. Because looking at the pro poor agenda, before I go to the next two persons here, looking at the pro poor agenda and looking at the likes of Eugene Fagon, even though I didn't want to mention too many names, but he's one of my men that I always give hard time to, looking at Eugene Fagon and others that will go to the Kobo shop with the president, to eat there, they say they are promoting the proper agenda, and then Eugene Fagon on a Sunday will take the axe and go to split wood, telling scheming. people, say this is proper. <laughs> Do you really think that's what that's, we mean by proper? Because I asked scheming. him, I asked him, I said, what's the meaning of your, uh, I mean, what's your understanding of the proper agenda? Because if you are doing things like this, and then telling people, say this is the proper way of doing things, I thought we were supposed to get rid of these things. Help people to get, you know, to eradicate poverty, but you coming out to imitate those people, it's like you're making mockery out of them. Yeah. Instead of trying to help them to, you know, get rid so, of... So, like uh, what he said, what he said about... about so, we never yeah. spoke so, when it comes to Madame Salif government. Yeah. And now, because the government is in power, so everybody wants to know the meaning of politics or definition of liberal and stuff. That's being unfair to us, you understand? Right. I, don't, I, don't, so, I, don't, I don't think it's... I think we have exhausted many, many of, of these unfair. issues. Let me just yeah. conclude. So, 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 I just no, this, this, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do. Because, you know, we've already Can discussed a lot. Two or three yeah. times now. No, no. We and, still have and, a lot and, to discuss, but this is what I want us to sorry, do. Sorry, Jeremy. I want <laughs> us to try to conclude because <laughs> I know most of you guys have places to go. To um, the plan to was to be here for 30 minutes. We did increase it to an hour. Now we have increased it a little over an hour. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you guys the chance to conclude. And then probably that can end the program, but I'll give you the chance. So you speak whatever you have on your mind. And then after that, we go to the next person and... How about that? Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. And I guess it started with me, so it will end with me. <laughs> 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 well, right. uh, well uh, this has been a, a, a healthy discussion. Uh, everybody around this table have, never, have not spoken against the good intentions of the president and the government of Liberia. Mm. We've only, pro we only proffered some level of recommendations and suggestions and opinion on what we think is necessary to be done. He may not agree with, with everything we've said, but I also don't want him to take something or those around him that will be watching this to take something from it as these are people that are opposing the government because we are now opposing the government. Sure. We believe that research, proper research leads to successful policy implementation. Even the Yastek for telling us that six, mil, uh, was, was it six million for the 
the 12 graders were fees, wire fee, 12, 12 million, right? Which is 2 million for, for, for each year. We don't even know the yardstick. When was the survey conducted to determine that the, the, the student population, the 12th grader of Liberia, would be static for six good years? LIPA provides and information. Understand? Well, we need to check that out because I, I don't know where LIPA, LIPA got it from. When even LIPA will not even, I mean, did not even go through this one. You can give me the source of that. But basically, our interest is that, like we said, the intention. I remember in 2013. Former, I mean, not former representative, Akaros Gray, who was then opposition, made a very good recommendation to the president and to his colleagues in the House that the issue and the challenge that was put forth to university students in Liberia needed to be addressed from the perspective of providing student loan. So the government should appropriate funding and provide to commercial banks so that university students could go there and take those loans. At the time, the university, the whole tuition would be around 175 dollars for 15 credits and what have you. And so university will go and take, because like I said, <coughs> this opportunity comes with responsibility. If you, were, if you talk student loan to go to school, and you know that you're going to pay back that loan, you're going to put in time to your studies, so that at the end of the day, you will not spend more time to take more loan and be owing a lot of money. So you will do it quickly to leave from there. Where is that idea? And now on our grade, we're just appointed to the board of the University of Liberia before the president came up with this uh, 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 tuition-free thing. So where was that? Where is that idea that he put forth to the United Party-led government that he could not put forth now to this government? The issue of county educational council system is in place in Liberia under the Manchester government. Every county before it used to be CEO and DEOs, but now they got the county council that comprises of prominent citizens of various counties to sit down around the table and come up with a monthly and, and by and on, up, I mean, up this on their ec ec I mean, educational challenges, and those things are sent down to the education ministry, and it reflects into policies and things like that. Are they still unfolding? Are they being quoted into these things and um, into the discussion? I say no, because we do not see consultations from those perspectives. So we are not against the, go the, the good intention of the president, but we are also, and we who are speaking these things are simply saying, Mr. President, we don't want you to fail. We don't want you to be seen as a failure. That's why we are pointing out these things. Because at the end of the day, he will be noted in Liberia as a person with the highest promise to the Liberian people. He's not no longer in campaign mood. If I during the campaign mood, the president did not make promises. That's why he did not attend a lot of debates and things. If he even attended some, I did not see him. I did not remember he attended a lot of debates because he did not make promises. So at this time, he should not be making promises. He is not in a position to implement promises or what he had got on his mind. And implementation is not based on just grabbing the half hazard. As I speak to you now, the issue of tuition free for universal Liberia is not the solution to the tuition uh, financial problem that students are faced with in universities in Liberia. Because it's not only the University of Liberia. So what, ha what about I mean, other private in 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 institutions? I mean, you do not have the space to make everybody leave from, you know, and cotton tongue, from UMU, from AMEU, to come to the University of Liberia to benefit from the, from the, prime, I mean the free tuition. So you have to, when you're making your educational policy, you're presenting it to the people, and you can't present in haphazard. When you're presenting it, you present one package of documents to the people. Address the issue of primary institutions, address the issue of public institutions in your country, and address the issue of technical issue of vocational institutions in your country, because that's one of the major things that we, I mean, we're holding on to. There are some people that may not be in the position to go to universities now, but they too can go to technical and vocational schools. What are the programs? Should people from MVDC, quote unquote, come again to the president with an appeal to the foreign ministry or to the executive manager before he can come up with an announcement again to MVDC and give one and, and school be closed for that day? No. He sh it should be packaged. That's what we think, and we think if that is done, our country is going to be better. Thank you. So I just want to thank you for affording me the opportunity and time to be here, and I'm, I mean, my, my, my phone is open to you Definitely. for further discussion yeah. and future and I, interactions. And I, and, I, and I personally hope that we can do something right after this one. So, mm -hmm. Chester, to you. Well, thank you very much for the time you afforded me here. We had a very fruitful discussion, and uh, as we all said, George, we all love the country. You got a very kind heart towards Liberia. But uh, I want to say to the president, as I said earlier, the president have time. The government have time. Let the government take his time. We are not, the Liberian people are not in campaign where you keep promising them. And uh, at the end of the day, the same people that say Hosanna, Hosanna, the same people will say crucify him. Joshua is a very lovable man. 
We love him. I mean, some of us, they didn't want him to be president, but now he's president, and we're going to yeah. do everything we can do to support him because Liberia comes first. Definitely. At the end of the day, we're going to look at Liberia and say, what have we achieved? And in the same token, I want to say thanks to the president for the rule project. They're doing very well with the rule. And uh, four or five months from now, when we look back, like, there, there will be a lot of rules. And uh, we'll be able to say, oh, the president, did, the government did well. Yeah. But on land of the education system, we want the president to take time. Let's go back and revisit some of these things. There are a lot of schools in Liberia that don't have good running water, no electricity. And when we're talking about free tuition, I know people looking at Morovia, but I want to stretch it outside of Morovia. Some children don't even have a fitting blackboard. If you go to some of the places, you see the school building, you say, is this a government school? Let the president go back there. Let the government stretch their arm. Let them look beyond what we see in Morovia. Free tuition is not a bad thing. But is the educational system up to standard for free tuition? That's where I'm coming from. And uh, before I close, before I, I mean, the cities, CDC was on the street almost every day demonstrating doing Ellen government. So if the brothers say doing Ellen time, people wasn't saying anything. That's not true. CDC had cast in the street of Morovia. So, <laughs> CDC had a uh, big honor wear in their hand. They said it was Eddie honor. I don't Eddie Penty. Sound to that. <laughs> we all saw those things. We were. Yeah. All, I mean, we all saw it. So now people might come from a different angle, not holding casket, not taking on this on the street. We're discussing the but issue. We are all still discussing the issue. So thank you very much for the time. And Charles, I know we knocked the hammer on your head, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the hammer was Honorable on, Chairman, uh, we love you. We love CBC. And any time, any hour, my phone is open. No problem. You and I, we are friends of Costa. Yeah, and uh, we still meet on the other side again. Thank yep. you so much. 100%. Thank you. All right, Charles, uh, to you. We have just a few minutes. My yeah. name is still on it. And then I feel uh, like, uh, can, uh, can I just shoot you over? Please stop him. Yeah. Okay, you should go I mean, first because Charles might have something to say when you speak. <laughs> so you go first. And yeah. Chairman really want you me before leaving me. So anyway, I want to say thank you for every one of us that you know that, that came here today, left our schedules, you know. And uh, my thing of the government, I have nothing personal against the government. I'm a Liberian, you know. <clears throat> I love my country, and we all we should see the best, you know, for our people. So the th the thing here today is, you know, we we kind of dialogue, you know, find solution for our problem. So yeah. I have a mind, different mindset when it comes to running government. You know, I have this way back, if you may call it, revolutionary mindset. You know, so with that, I'm also an uh, economist. So I believe in a Marxist theory, you know. Mm -hmm. So equal distribution of wealth, you know, among the citizenry. So if we find ourselves sitting here today and then discussing the country of Liberia, it's not about because we want to be able to discuss politics, you know, it's about one's love for his country. Sure. Yeah, so, and Liberia now for the trajectory we see, you know, the country on, so it is important that we discuss issues so that let the president know that, I mean, we have some people that look beyond, you know, that actually want, you know, the best for the country. And that happens when you know, he have the listening ears, you know, to listen to people. Being a president is, is, is difficult, we know, because you have a lot of people saying stuff. Sometimes you might see some as crazy and some you might see as important. But sometimes the important ones might be the crazy one because if it coincides with your interest, then it becomes a problem for the country. So my advice to them is that let them take their time to deal with the Liberian people, to manage the resources of our country, you know. And then also to the Liberian people, let us all try to support this government and put aside this party thing. I have never been a, a partisan of any political party in Liberia all the years I spent in Liberia. So, and I don't think I'm on record for it. So my brother here, Chairman, you know, I wish to work with you, you know, so that we'll we, have more discussion. So that we can we can discuss more viable things when it comes to the upliftment of the country. President We are, please, you know, tell him, please take your time. We're not rushing you. You got six years, impossible. You guys said twelve years straight, no stopping. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta take your time. 
So I just want to start there. And, and, I, and I think you just gave Charles a chance to convince you to join CDC after telling him that you haven't been a partisan of any party. Yeah. So now he's thinking like, <laughs> so and, easy, and, and, and I'm hoping on so, this, hopefully I can get it work, but I want to train all the parts that the people are, you know, you guys are addressing the president. I know I'm friends with Sam Manor. Sometimes we are seeing messages so I can kind of put them together and send it, um, you know, send it to him as a spokesperson for the government. So maybe if he can get that, you know, to the president. Yeah, so now, now yeah, to just, Charles too to can just, get that. To just conclude, yeah. let the president take a look at those colleges, you know, you know, counties, you know, because what happens is most of the people you see in, 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 in those colleges, most of them want to come to Monrovia. Mm -hmm. But because of the over population or overcrowdedness of the universal library and the system in place over there so they don't have the will to move to the city but with the pronouncement some of them trust me they want to leave your community college and, and come over there so with the ministry of education there's a huge burden on them they have to sit down and, and, and think of a way on how to handle the issue of the city or universal library being overcrowded you understand because if you have the will, for instance, people say, you know, communist country, they have problem and they don't encourage private distance businesses and stuff. So if you have a, a university like Cottington and then you have the Wolfe Community College. So Cottington is not providing certain necessity for the students. But if you have the, 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 the Wolfe uh, Community uh, Technical College, you have computer labs, you have all the modern equipment over there. By default, you don't have to tell the student of Cardinal University to go to Gopher Community College. No. You understand? No, so no. this is what we want to bring to the table. Mr. President, try to equip our Come colleges, on. try to encourage our students to go to school, and try to open the avenue for every librarian to learn. Let us kick this illiteracy out of our country because this is one of the issues that we face in our country. And trust me, with the population we have, with the love we see, you know, from George Weir, we believe that he can do it. But he should take his time, review policies, and introduce his to meet the requirements of the Labrain people. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, Charles, all eyes on you. <laughs> all eyes on me. Second part, man, gentlemen. No, it's not. I think, I think we all have, <laughs> well, we we all have love for Liberia. Yeah. We just that's why we are here Try to profess it in different ways. They say the love of Liberty brothers here, right? So the love of Liberty brothers here today. At the end of the day, we're all trying to suggest what would be good for the country or what could work. I mean, Fallon here first, you know, disagreed that the timing was wrong, but, you know, the his eventual uh, uh, thought process was, Instead of giving it free to them, it's the wrong timing, but make it out of loan when they don't have jobs to even pay for, for that. You know, he said that was and, our current spirit statement. Yes, but he said he agreed. He said, where is it? And, all, and stuff like that. So, I mean, people can say things. I mean, I wouldn't even think that it should even be an issue of loan. Mm -hmm. If you're subsidizing it and giving it to them, give it to them so that you can alleviate. I mean, you can't alleviate poverty of people by turning the money you give into loan. I mean, it, it will be another chaos, I mean, from, from my own point of view. And, uh, you know, Chester spoke, you know, about uh, a few other things, you know, uh, reaching rural era for education and stuff, you know. And this immediate measure the government is taking, I mean, basically it's temporary. It's a temporary measure CCS. to ensure. Uh, CCS temporary. Yeah, it's, it's, it's temporary. Years. And, and is it CCS? The WAC is for six years. Yes. But this, you know, the first in, is a, a starting measure they're taking, but, I mean, it will continue. It's just where the funding you know, is they're trying to establish. The government is reaching out to every county you know, by road. You know, with the initiative of this government is to provide roads first. Uh, people will have the means to pay their children's you know, school fees and other tuitions if you provide them the opportunity to earn money. It is not there. Everybody is cramped in Morovia because you can't even get out of Morovia free. The next place that is stretched out of Morovia, even up in Nimba, is Ganta, the way you stop. You take two hours, 30 minutes to, to hit Ganta. You can take your market from Ganta. People struggle all over Nima County to, to get, so now they take one week on the road in the bush. Once you hit Ganta, two hours, you're in Monrovia. If you can reach out to other parts of the country, you alleviate suffering. Right now, you go to Ganta, in Monrovia, we have the, one of the highest you know, electricity payment in the world. Mm -hmm. When you go to Ganta, with people are paying fifteen to twenty dollars a month for electricity for the whole month. 
Because there is standard electricity in Ghana. You can put five air conditioning in your house if you want to. Coming from mm -hmm. Liberia? Yeah. No. From Cote d'Ivoire. No. Thank you. It's an agreement. Okay? So and and the reason is a plus. Broadway. It's a minority, you know, it's a union yeah. agreement. Okay? Aricos is not getting it from herself, too. She's getting it from Ghana and try, turn it over to Liberia. So it's not like Aricos generating all her electricity. I see. So uh, basically, in the discussion. if you provide roads and provide a provision for people to prosper, it will come through. People will not have a problem with paying tuition. You will reach so how much primary people education. Say in Monrovia. You just spoke about I mean, Nima. most of the people in Monrovia are buying fuel. If you buy fuel, so not two, three gallons. It's four dollars almost cents per gallon. Mm -hmm. But night, mm -hmm. you're talking about almost no, I'm one, about one the day. LEC. It's not all LEC. Over. It's not all over. Yeah, even so how, if much, how much even you pay for LEC have, per month? It's not even stable. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even it sure it how they calibrate it. Even if it depends on your so consumption. Let me let me let me Even if you have LEC, it is not stable. It will go off. It will come on. If you put any equipment on, you charge it, it will blow the phone off because you hear you hear the thing that going off. It's, it's not stable so it compared to compared to where <laughs> Ganta is, mm -hmm. and we are taking electricity from Ganta now to Banga. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, to make sure that Banga gets stable electricity, and so forth. But road is paramount. If you if you can take your Lofa County, Bon County, and Nima County are the highest producer of food in the country. If you can reach roads to to Kisidu, uh, Fusebu, or uh, Wanjama, other places, you will have food reaching Morovia in less than no time. If you can take the road and reach it right now, look at all, Senecode, look at all, road is on, it's ongoing, starting. They just launched it. The US government provided millions of dollars in order to open that road. The Kepa Ganta Highway, which will link right in Senecode, right there, and you know, it's on, going with, with Mata Steel. Okay, it means that you have reached. The, the other side of Guinea, you're reaching Cote d'Ivoire from, from Logato mm -hmm. to hit Senecode. Now you have Banga, the Banga Road going to Lofa ongoing currently. When you do that with the southeastern project that is ongoing, you have connected the entire country. You will not be forced to be in Monrovia to go through the hardship people are going through. There will be options. So road is number one for this government as, we are, as it is taking temporary measures to address the heightening issues that are going, a student's coming to the president, yes, he's trying to do that. So these are just you know, some of the things when you look at what the government is projecting, I mean, it will have a revision. I mean, nobody sat in stone and say, we're going to run the country, we're going to do this, and, and when, after one in November or by December, there will be a reshuffle because they're doing performance evaluation at this time, ongoing to you know, evaluate its performance, what its agenda is, if the performances of the people it has in place is in alignment. So with that, the recommendations will go to the president to make the first reshuffle. And you know, all those ones are in the pipeline. But everybody cannot run the institution at the same time. It's not easy. It's That's a difficult task. There will be you know, well, changes. There will be there. ongoing changes going on as time goes on. Everybody cannot work in government. The private sector asks, from 20, by 2022, we expect most of the roads to be completed. At that so, time, so, so then you'll be ready to get at that time, for 2023. Yeah, huh? At that time, Liberia <laughs> will embark on a massive agricultural program to and they'll open up plantations to everybody. People will be there. That's where loans will come in. So those are what we have on. And, and uh, yeah, it, oh it's, it's encouraging to, to exchange with the brothers here. But I mean, those adjustments will be ongoing with the, as the government continues to, to make strike. Okay. Thank you. Thank All right. Um, so, you know, this was, uh, I don't know how to describe it. You know, mostly I always say that whenever we have debates, people always start with smiles. But at the end of the day, you know, it ends with something else. But I think today we started with smile, <laughs> ended with smile, yeah. so that was a different thing. And, you know, I appreciate all of you guys that are watching us today. This has been a great program. We expect more great programs to be coming in the future. I wouldn't even mind having these guys as my panelists all the time, like pretty much every Sunday or every other Sunday, you know, just to make sure we keep having fruitful and healthy um, discussions. You know, discussions like this. So. If you are watching us, I just want to bring up a few things. This is for our financial. Um, we do have our app. Um, I've been very lazy to have this on the Apple market. So we only have it so far on the Google market. If you go to the Google market, that is the Android market, type for our financial, you will have access to our app. And all of the videos from us will be seen there. You will also see more news on for our financial always. We do have a Facebook page. 
you can check that out we have an official page on facebook um i think we have about 19,000 followers um right now check us out on that and we have a youtube page that you can also check us out and some people will be watching this on tv some will have the chance to watch it on facebook live but if you do have a chance to watch it on tv um i think it's channel 859 and channel 20 channel 20 is going to be your local tv so it's easier to watch it on that you know because the other one you probably might need comcast and i've forgotten the number for um you know or this also so we have all of those and i will be sharing the dates for you guys on facebook so you know the days that the program will be replayed it will be replayed at least five times you know on probably next week so you guys will all have a chance to watch it i want to say thanks to you again for being with us today it is also always a pleasure to have you guys on here hopefully we can see you next time thank you, thank you. Thank you.